Good morning, everyone. It's so lovely to see you all. Uh, there's a lovely comment here from uh, Catherine, who immediately off the bat, who says, honestly, nothing brings me more joy than the woman dancing at the all right, all right, all right bit every time. <laughs> and it's funny, you know, every week we play that video and every week it just sort of gets me in the mood. So uh, thank you all so, so much for being here. Uh, it's lovely to see the chat comments come through already. Do pop in the chat where you're watching from this morning. It's always so lovely to know uh, where you all are uh, and always slightly mind blowing as well. So uh, please do drop in that chat feature. And don't forget as well to switch those messages to everyone. Uh, so the way that you do that is you go into the chat feature and you'll see a little toggle that says uh, two. And presently, if it says hosts and panelists, uh, make sure to switch that to everyone so everyone can see your messages. Uh, they're now scrolling far quicker than I can actually see. Uh, but we've got Berkshire, Copenhagen, Dublin, Switzerland, South Africa, Australia, India, Belfast, London, Yorkshire. This is ridiculous. Let's get on with the introduction. Uh, so you know all about, oh, we've got an Ely, John Torrens. Hello, my friend. Uh, you'll be watching from down the road from me. Uh, two challenges for today. Uh, the first one, keep that chat feature buzzing throughout today's session as it is right now. Honestly, it, it brings such a great energy to these sessions. Um, and, and really, it's really, really important as well. You know, I mean, as much as Sophie and I will be doing our best to present information that makes your bl minds blow and you put smiles on your faces. Uh, honestly, the other really, really important part of our session is making sure that every one of you get the opportunity to say hello to each other to listen and be positively lovely. So please keep that chat feature moving because honestly, it makes such a big difference. Uh, the second thing that I absolutely adore and I really appreciate, and hopefully this is a nod to Sophie's expertise as well, is after today's session, please do share one of your key learnings on social media, whether that's LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, wherever it may be. It would be really appreciated if you help get the word out about the Marketing Meter, but also have the opportunity to share those learnings with one another. Um, that would be incredible and appreciated. So please do take the time to share on social afterwards. If that sounds good, let's get on with the proper bit of the introduction. So today we have Sophie Miller, founder of Pretty Little Marketer. Sophie is evidence that uh, nice folks don't finish last. Not only is she kind beyond belief, she's also hugely successful. She's one of those people who I cheer on from the sidelines all the time. And genuinely marvel at her efforts, often think, how is she doing that? Um, over the past two years, Sophie has built a following over 130,000 people, which is absolutely bonkers. More importantly, every one of those followers on each of the different platforms uh, that she's built it upon feels like a community. And that's magic. It's rare, it's important, and it's something a lot of people want to do. So today we're going to be investigating how to turn a following into a community. So yeah, today is one of those days where I'm going to be sat here with my notebook and actually taking a little bit of time to learn along with all of you. So uh, my notes is hopefully, uh, my notes are hopefully going to be bountiful from today's session. I'm very, very excited. Uh, and I might have had a little bit too much coffee too. Um, today will function as a presentation and then a Q&A. Uh, so a word to the wise on that is to get those questions in nice and early. Uh, every week we usually have questions left over. So the way that you're going to do that is uh, find the Q&A feature that is found down below uh, by wiggling your mouse and find that Q&A feature and drop your questions in there. Uh, that would be really, really appreciated. And uh, hopefully we'll get those questions in uh, the answer that you would like to. Uh, don't forget also to give a thumbs up uh, to the questions that you want answering because those will gravitate to the top and those will be the questions that I ask later first. Uh, thank you all so much, by the way, for all of these lovely chat messages coming in. I'm seeing them and it's making me smile so, so much inside <laughs> and outside actually. Um, so uh, before we get going, one last big thank you, and that's to our sponsors today. Uh, so today's featured sponsor is Content Cal, who have recently been acquired by Adobe. Uh, Content Cal are a fabulous social media scheduling tool. They're a content scheduling tool. They help you get your content in order. They've been great supporters of the Marketing Meetup over the past two and a half to three years. Uh, and obviously with that recent success of being acquired too, uh, going through just a really amazing period for all of them. Um, so do take the time to check out Content Cal. And uh, while you're there, um, I'll link Andy Lambert in the follow-up. 
Um, and just take a moment to say, you know, either well done or thank you to Andy. Uh, he's a really great guy. He's spoken at the marketing meetup, knows his lemons, um, and, you know, he's, he's a good guy. So Content Cal, thank you very much. Also, a big thank you to our other sponsors for today. Content Square, Hrefs, Impression, uh, uh, Content Cal, already mentioned, Fiverr, Redgate, Cambridge Marketing College, Brand Recruitment, Gravity Global, and Third Light. We'll mention each of those as featured sponsors over the following weeks. Uh, and please do take the time to say thank you to those as well, if you have a moment. So that's me done. That's my introduction done. So uh, now is the time to pass over to the very lovely, very talented uh, Sophie. Thank you so much for being here today. Wow. Um, firstly, what an introduction. I don't think anyone's ever hyped me up that much. So Joe, thank you so much. <laughs> um, and thank you everybody for joining. This is by far the best Zoom chat I've ever witnessed in my existence. Um, you are awesome. I've seen a few people from Gloucester and Cheltenham, which is exciting because that is my ends. I am based down in the Southwest over in Cheltenham. Um, so anyone tuning in from the area, Hello, and obviously everybody else, hello too. Um, so I am so excited to be joining you today. Um, not only have I followed Joe and the marketing meetup for what feels like forever, um, I'm talking all about community, which is just my favorite thing ever. Um, so with that, I will begin sharing my very pink slides. Um, not a graphic designer I was talking with Joe um, before about how my transitions make up for my lack of cute graphics so fingers crossed we'll enjoy those throughout so with that let's talk community so there are lots of people here this morning and if you're watching on the recording too hello and which is very exciting and um some of you or most of you or many of you might not know who sophie is so who um i um i am sophie here is a picture of me back in summer when the sun was shining and we had our tans and we could enjoy you know nice smoothies and can you tell that i'm missing summer because i really wish it was here i am sophie and i love community I started Pretty Little Marketer in June 2020. Um, in the UK and in many places around the world, we were in our first of many lockdowns due to the pandemic. And um, at that point, I was in my second year of university. I studied at the University of Gloucestershire and I went to university as a mature student. So I was in my second year of university and um, in the pandemic, I'd just finished my final assignments my second year, thinking ahead to my third year, thinking ahead to graduation. And um, it all got a bit much, if I'm honest. I started feeling incredibly overwhelmed at this prospect of, okay, time for a career in marketing, but what does, what does that mean? And what are my options and how do I get there? And um, let's call it a quarter life crisis. Sophie was having a quarter life crisis. And um, I took to Google. I specifically remember Googling words not to use on your CV. You know, what are the turn ups for employers? What words are used too often? Where's the fluff and how do I avoid that? I looked at about 22 different web pages. I looked at prospects, indeed, you know, blog pages, everything. And I left my search feeling a hundred times more overwhelmed and confused than I began it. Sunday afternoon, struggling, feeling overwhelmed, just finished my second year of university. What next? If I'm feeling this way, I'm sure others are too. And I'm in that moment, I have no idea what led me to this idea, what led me to this decision, but I started an Instagram page. <laughs> because when you're mid-crisis, what do you do other than go on your phone and start an Instagram page? Three hours later, I made the world's ugliest logo on Canva. You will not see it on these slides because it is, it's far in the digital bin. I made the world's ugliest logo. I whipped up some really interesting looking posts that we've now learned from and have leveled up from and um so pretty little marketer was born i then posted every single day and grew a community i've written here that i love community so much i built one of my own without even knowing it and that's what i'm going to go into today 
So community is not about the numbers. It's about the people. However, to emphasize my journey, I do have a bit of a map here and I'm gonna take you along the PLM journey so far. So I started PLM as mentioned in June 2020, which feels like a lifetime ago now. Just 18 days later, we hit our first 1,000. When I say we, I mean me. <laughs> I hit my first <laughs> 1,000 followers 18 days later. And um, honestly, I couldn't believe it. I got my boyfriend to drive me to Marks and Spencers because when I'm celebrating, I shop at Marks and Spencers. And um, I treated myself to a call in the caterpillar cake. Um, and I bought myself a one candle to celebrate the 1,000. About 10 days later, we then hit 2,000. And by the end of the month, we'd set up on LinkedIn as well. And our community was now at 5,000 people. I didn't get five cakes for that 5,000, but maybe the next milestone we hit, I'll treat myself to a few cakes. Fast forward seven months later, we hit 30,000 community members across LinkedIn and Instagram. A few months later, 50,000. And it was last August where I actually sat down and was like, hold up, let's pause for a second. There are lots of people here and I have no idea what I'm doing. For reference, when I started PLM, we were in quarter life crisis mode. I had no strategy, I had no plan. I just knew that I had a problem and I was struggling and people out there were too. And I wanted to bring them together. And lo and behold, we had done that. So August, the time came where I started freelancing, I was running PLM and everything felt a bit big everything felt a bit out of control. And it was then when I sat down and I was like, okay, what am I doing here? I'm growing a community and I'm running a community. What does that mean? How am I achieving that? And how can I continue that further? Those are three questions I am. Although I'm a digital marketer and everything I do is digital, um, I don't think you can be a real life piece of paper. So I got a big piece of paper, if anyone remembers what paper is, got a real big piece of paper. And I wrote down those three questions and I wrote down my answers. And those are the three things I'm gonna be talking you through today. So everything I'm gonna be chatting through with you today are things I have lived and things I have learned along my journey. Um, these aren't things that my university lecturers has, have thrown at me from some scholar 30 years ago. They are things that I've done right now that help achieve community over following. And uh, what was really funny is unintentionally in that August when I got my big piece of paper and I wrote down those questions and I began to understand what is a community and how am I continuing to achieve that community feel in my online space was when my metrics and when the size of my community literally doubled and has now almost tripled. And um, I think there are a few special things that, that I learned along the way and um, yeah, I'm going to share them with you now, I guess. <laughs> so to me, the difference between a following and a community is really simple. It is who you choose to prioritize. I follow a lot of brands on Instagram and Twitter because I am I'm a marketer <laughs> and so I so I enjoy following them and um, I don't I don't know about you but um, I miss the times sometimes when I wasn't a marketer, when I could watch a TV ad or I could see a sponsored post on my timeline and not overanalyze it. I, um, we, we tuned into the Super Bowl on um, Sunday night slash Monday morning and um, every time an ad came on, I um, said to James, my boyfriend, I was like, did you know this? Did you know it cost this much? Did you know they've used that celebrity for this reason? And um, he's like, Sophie, it's, it's 2 a.m. I just want to enjoy the Super Bowl come on <laughs> and I, I know that this is a safe space and you all feel that way too and um so I often you know I follow brands on Instagram social media where not and um it's really obvious to me who they're prioritizing whether it is them and their messaging or me as their follower and community member and I think if we're not already we are entering a time of much more conscious consumerism consumers 
you and I, clients, you and I, customers, you and I, we are waking up to brand marketing. And that's why TikTok has come in and completely changed the game. Brands can no longer share what feels like an ad anymore because we we don't like it. We don't want to be sold to anymore. We want to be included and, and spoken to on a personal level. And that is the difference between a community and a following. It is who you choose to prioritize. So I know that you guys love the chat, which is so awesome because um, I've done many a webinar with PLM and um, I've talked to societies, universities, amazing communities like you lot. And um, it's my nightmare when I pose a question and no one responds, but I know, I know that you guys have my back here. Yeah. So I would love to know what brand do you think smashes community? Whether it is an e-com brand that you buy from or like a supermarket brand, um, someone you follow on Instagram. Lots of votes for Joe here, absolutely. Duolingo, awesome answer. Spec savers. Gymshark, awesome. Innocent, oh, Innocent are great. They're great, aren't they? Aldi is a really good one. Innocent Oatly, Monzo. Awesome, absolutely. Gif Gaff, ooh, I'll have to have a look at Gif Gaff, see how they hone community. I don't think I've seen them on socials. Ryanair is an awesome one, Aldi, absolutely. And what these brands do, we can learn from. So I'm gonna share an example of my own with you all. A brand that I think does community really well is a brand called Lounge Underwear. Now, if you haven't heard of Lounge, they are a lounge wear brand and um, they are based in Solihull so any of you up in up from me in Birmingham around Solihull they are they are from you which is so cute um, they went from their literal lounge hence why it's called lounge to being a global brand but what I really love through what they've achieved is that they've never lost this sense of community you can see here that three million followers oh that's a big number <laughs> And achieving that community sense for them, I think, is a huge, huge achievement. And I think they have done this in three ways. So these are all screenshot Instagram. And, um, the first way I think they do this really well is they get people involved. I'll speak through all of this a little bit more in depth shortly. One thing they do really well is they get people involved. So you'll see here that they reply to almost all of their comments. I'm pretty sure they only have a social team of four or five people. And I do not know. I do not know how they do it at all because they're across all platforms. And somehow they reply to all of their comments. And this level of interaction, I think, is really, really important when you're focusing on a community rather than a following. Because rather than leaving your audience at the sidelines and just showing them what you're doing, hey, this is my new collection. Hey, this is the, the latest influencer we've partnered with. Well, actually, hey, let's get you involved. What do you think? I would love to hear your thoughts. What do you think? How can I respond to this comment? They do that really well. The next thing is their use of Instagram stories and their content is more than just us. Hey, this is our new collection. Hey, this is our new jumper. Buy it now, click here to buy. Well, actually, know what are you doing, community? And how can we get you involved on a larger scale? So things like screenshotting their comments on their Instagram stories, they have guest writers on their blog, they often do giveaways, they feature people who have tagged them on their socials. It's bigger than us. Let's show off you too, community, because you are as much a part of this as we are. And then the final thing I think that they do really, really well is they, they ask. <laughs> I think often as marketers, especially if you work in socials, we can sit back and, and struggle. And we all do. And that's completely normal. And that's OK. What do my audience want to say? Oh, I have no idea what to post. We can ask them. <laughs> there are people out there who love your brand. And what Lounge do really well is they ask them, what would you like to see more of? What are you loving right now? What's your favorite product? If you could bring out one product in our line, what would it be? And you're taking it from just being, hello, this is us, to actually, well, you can get involved too, and that's okay. You have a voice in our community, you have a place in our community. 
because we are a community. So a brand that I think does community really well is Lounge. Alongside all of the awesome ones that you mentioned in the chat function there, I think Duolingo also an absolutely awesome example. I am, um, yeah, their TikToks are a fun time. So what I think Lounge do really well and the way that I see community is instead of what do I want to post, Hey guys, look at our new collection. Hey everyone, look at me and awesome things I'm doing. Instead of what do I want to post, what do my audience want from me and how can I give that to them? So three things I have learned throughout my community journey that you need to know are these. Number one, buzzword alert. I don't know about you marketers, but I am beginning to hate the word value. And every time I see it somewhere, it grinds me that little bit more because I think value is never explained. Make your content valuable. Make sure you add value. What does that mean? I'm going to tell you. Don't worry. So number one, can you tell that it really frustrates me? Number one, give more value than you take. Number two, provide your audience with opportunities to get involved just like Lounge Do and Gymshark and all these other brands that you love. And allow your audience to own your brand as much as you do. Remember, it's not about you anymore. It is about us, it's about them. And number three, gonna end on a bit of a practical note in a few slides time, is using your insights for a deeper understanding of your current audience. I am, as mentioned, set up PLM <laughs> with no intentions. Got to last August and um, there were people beyond belief. We were a community that I never ever in my wildest dreams imagined. And um, I was at a point where I was really struggling to know what do people want from me? Uh, what do I post? How do I help people? And I sat back and I began to understand firstly what data and insights are, um, because despite three years at university, they didn't teach me these things. So I've been learning, been learning as I go. So ending on a bit of a practical note on how we can understand our audience and use our data and insights to continue momentum. So, you know, when we get to the end of our 10 great ideas, we can have 10 more. How does that sound? I'm going to chat through those things now. I would love it if you could pop a smiley face in the chat. Um, if, that, if that sounds good, let me know. Awesome. I love doing that mid webinar because then I feel like everyone, you're all here with us, which is so, so cute. So thank you for your smileys. So what is value? Ugh, the buzzwords that we all hate. We see it on LinkedIn, you know, the gurus, the copy and paste gurus. Add value, give value. The only way to grow is value. What does that mean? To me, value is created through exchange. When I give you something right now, I'm giving you something, I'm giving you information. <laughs> and in exchange, I'm creating value. So you can give your audience many, many things through your content, whether it is, you know, an Instagram story, an Instagram post, an email, um, your newsletter, a blog post on your website. You can create value through exchange by giving your audience something. Something I do when I create any piece of content, whether it's for a client, so I'm a freelance social media manager alongside PLM, whether it is um, a client or PLM or Sophie, because I post on LinkedIn too, um, I'll always step back. And um, sometimes I hurt my own feelings with this question, if I'm honest, but I will always step back and I will say, okay, Sophie, what is the point in this post and what are my audience actually taking away from it because you know if it's just a picture of me talking about all the great things I've done this month that's great we can shout about our achievements but the way we take our audience from a following to a community is by using that piece of content to give them something hey guys it's the end of February here are five things I've achieved this month following Hey guys, it's the end of February. Here are five things I've achieved this month and five ways you can achieve it too, or five things you need to know to help you celebrate your own wins at the end of this month. Community. Because rather than take, 
give me your engagement, give me your like, give me a comment, tell me I'm great, buy my product, you're giving. So we can give to our community in many, many ways. Um, I definitely recommend having a Google and a research on content pillars if you're not familiar with them already. And I could talk about them forever, however, so I haven't included them in today's session. But if you do have any questions, you can find me everywhere and I'm always happy to help. But I kind of have niched down my values into three different ways. So I give my audience value through educating them through a post, through inspiring them through a post. So this might be something a little more on the lines of storytelling. What is your brand origin? What struggles have your brand faced and overcome that other people can learn from? And then the final way that I like to provide value is by entertaining people. So again, whether it's a funny story or on a PLM Instagram, I love sharing like brand tweets or marketing memes and by entertaining someone and just sharing something as simple as that. What are people taking away from that? You know, they're taking away a bit of fun, which is awesome. The main way that I create value in my own community is by educating people. And I really love, and I think it's really important if we are focusing on this educational piece. So if you're posting, trying to build a personal brand on LinkedIn, or you're growing a blog, um, and you're posting content that is aimed to educate people, how are you making it tangible? So say I make an Instagram post, because that is where I kind of focus on PLM, and I am talking about five, five ways to grow a community rather than outlining just what those things are, giving people the tools to then go away and do that for themselves, I think is really, really important. So value is created through exchange. By me giving you something, I'm giving you entertainment or education or inspiration, your audience will reward that. So vanity wise, vanity metric wise, that might look like a like, a comment, a share, a save. It might look like a DM. Because when you give someone something, they are more inclined to give you something back. And I think value is a really important way to create not just community, but actual advocates. You all love the Marketer Meetup, right? Because you are here and Joe and his team are amazing. How many times a week or a month do you tell other people about the Marketing Meetup? Oh, I was at this insane webinar the other day at the Marketing Meetup. How many times do you tag a friend? in their posts because you think it would help them. What that is, is value. If I can give you something, you can share it with somebody else. And that is how we kind of expedite the size of our community. We build advocates. We don't want followers. We want people who love what we are up to and feel a part of that. So step number one is value. Step number two is giving your audience opportunities to get involved. So similar to lounge in the examples that I showed, it's more than just, hello, this is our product. You buy from me because I am the brand and you are the person who buys from me. It's much more than that. They give their audience opportunities to get involved. And this doesn't have to be really difficult. You know, you don't have to call up all of your customers like, hey, what product do you want next? Hey, come in, you know, create our next line with us. It doesn't have to be that level of involvement. It can be some things as simple as pick tomorrow's post. Something I really love seeing on Instagram with like the polls or um, on LinkedIn with polls. I know LinkedIn polls are a bit of a touchy subject. I personally really enjoy them. <laughs> Pick tomorrow's post. What do you want to see tomorrow? Do you want to see five tips on LinkedIn? Or do you want to see three things I wish I knew before I was a social media manager? Giving your audience the opportunity to own parts of what they're doing. Because when you vote and you see that post tomorrow, how exciting. I chose that. I am part of what this brand, what this person, what this entity is doing. Something I really love seeing is um, things, you know, like, who do you want to see? in our next webinar, what do you wanna see next? Because when that person is in the next webinar, how exciting, so awesome. Giving people ways to get involved is key. 
Lounge also do this really well. And I know Gymshark do and Duolingo on TikTok and um, Innocent actually are really awesome at this. I know loads of you mentioned them in the chat. If you have a look through their comment section, specifically on Instagram, Chef's Kiss, absolutely awesome. And um, whenever they are tagged in a post on, um, on LinkedIn, Innocent and Monzo do this really well, they will respond. So you are rewarding a piece of engagement with an interaction. Hey guys, five things you need to know about what I'm up to this month and five ways you can achieve the same thing. Oh, Sophie, this was a really cool post. Thank you for sharing. I think that X, Y, Z. That was really easy. And um, if I'm honest, I'm a bit of a hypocrite here because I'm awful at responding to my comments. But it's something I'm trying. You know, we're learning, we're honest here. We're getting there together. Rewarding engagement with an interaction. Have you ever had that feeling when you like comment on a brand's post or someone you look up to or perhaps a celebrity and they comment back? Oh, how exciting. How exciting. They've acknowledged me and they are appreciating me because I have a voice here and you're almost acknowledging that voice. And then the final really, really easy way to get your audience involved is by simply inviting them to share their thoughts. LinkedIn, Instagram, Instagram stories, Facebook, whenever I end a caption or often on like the last slide of a carousel, I will have a little quote and it's like, what do you think about this? I am. Um, I recently did a post about marketing lessons we can learn from Duolingo and I shared it on Instagram and um, in the caption I put, you know, what other brands do you love learning from? on TikTok. I, um, I made a post ages and ages ago when um, Molly May became the creative director of Pretty Little Thing. I, um, I created a post about it. What is a creative director? What does this mean? And then I wrapped up by asking my community, what are your thoughts on this? What do you think about this? Share your thoughts in the comments. And what you're doing is you're giving people permission to get involved. Because I don't know about you, but I'm a bit of a shy commenter and I find it quite scary to get involved. But when a brand or an individual gives me permission, what do you thought? Share your thoughts in the comments, drop an emoji in the comments, do this in the comments. OK, well, now you've given me permission to do so. So I feel more inclined to. And when I interact and you interact back and by you giving me an opportunity to be a part of what you're doing, you're taking me from someone who's a bystander, a viewer, a follower, and you're turning me into a community member who is as much a part of what you are doing as, as you are, as the brand, celebrity, person, entity. And on a more practical note, how do we understand what our audience wants from us? Because to give value, we feel a need, whether that is by inspiring or entertaining or educating. We give our audience practical takeaways, so we have given them something, and in return, they give us their community ship. But how do we actually, how do I know? How do I know what people really want from me? So there are two ways that, that I do this. Um, very basic ways. I, um, I hate maths. I hate numbers. I am. Um, it's, it's funny, actually, because I'm, I'm doing a master's at the moment in um, data analytics. Um, so when I do these things, I'm like, I hate numbers. I, I hate these things. And um, all of my lecturers follow me on PLM and um, they'll often reply like, Sophie, no, no, you don't hate numbers. We're learning about how to love them. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> I still hate them, hate the numbers. But there are easy ways to make them make sense. <laughs> So number one is I have a content calendar and I'm sure many of you do too, but if you don't, really easy. I created a content calendar on Google Sheets, which is if you're unaware, it's like Excel, but, but on Google. So if you work across platforms, I work on my phone, I have an iPad, I have my laptop, it's really collaborative. So on here, I literally just have columns. I have the date, I have my post title, I have my content pillar. I have a grid theme and I'm very specific about my Instagram aesthetic. So I have a column there outlining what that's going to look like. And then what you'll see over here is my engagement. Now, if you're in a strategic role or data is your thing, you're going to hate, <laughs> you're going to hate how I manage my numbers, but it's all about making them make sense to you. 
So I literally just list my likes, my comments, and my engagement rate. You could list things like your reach, the amount of people that your content has got in front of. Um, if you work in, you know, email marketing, you might click rates, open rates, other email buzzwords that I'm not familiar with. Um, so noting down things that matter to you is really important. But to me, an indication of whether my community like my content or enjoy my content or not is likes, comments, and my engagement rate because this shows how much of the percentage of my audience has interacted with my content. And um, what I do at the end of every month is um, very, my aesthetics get the better of my organization. I definitely need to switch up my colors. But what you'll see here is the light pink, the light pinks here. I highlight my, not my worst performing pieces of content because it's not, they're not bad, no piece of content is bad, but the least well performing pieces of content I will highlight in this cute mauvey pink color. And what this tells me is that these were the pieces of content my audience didn't find as valuable this month. And um, I might also highlight my best performing pieces of content that month, okay. Well, they loved my post, my community loved my post about five things we can learn from Selena Gomez and her beauty brand. My community loved that. Why did they love that? And how do I replicate that in the future? So perhaps it had a really short caption that was snappy. Um, perhaps the slides, I create carousels quite often on Instagram, perhaps carousels, um, perhaps it didn't have many slides on, or perhaps the takeaway was a lot simpler to that of my least well-performing piece of content. So taking a step back and zooming out from these data and these metrics and rather than, oh my goodness, there's so many numbers, stripping it back, what worked well, what hasn't worked well, or what does this tell me about my audience and what they need? And the second way that I do this is by, as mentioned, just asking, asking my community what they want, what they need and what they enjoy. Um, I think humans as people, we love talking. We love talking about what we like, and what we dislike, right? So why not allow our audience the opportunity to do that? Um, what do you hate most about the job hunt? Say I'm a, I, I run a skincare brand and I'm running their Instagram, for example. What's your biggest skincare problem? What do you hate most about picking a new product? Um, what do you love most about being a skincare junkie? Asking people questions that kind of get their emotions going, but that are strategic enough to give you the insights you need. So here I've done like a mock Instagram story. So I might ask my audience, what do you hate most about the job hunt? And their answers will tell me what they need. They hate writing a CV. They hate writing a cover letter. They don't know what to ask at the end of an interview. There are multiple content ideas right there that I can then use to address their needs. I will give them something in that content, creating value, creating community. I hope, I hope that was all helpful. I am a million and 10 other things I did could have shared today, but I wanted to keep it simple. The three things I have learned throughout my crazy journey of not knowing what I was doing to learning about what to do to now kind of still learning as I go, but having a better idea of what community is and how to grow that and nurture that. I hope that was helpful. But with that said, um, I know that we are leaving time for Q&A. So yeah, happy to take any questions. Spot on. Thank you so much, Sophie. There was uh, there was so much there. I think there was there was a couple of really really interesting quotes um, that I wanted to pick out, and I'm, I'm using this opportunity to also give you the chance to look at the chat feature as we go uh, and see these lovely comments coming through. Um, the the two quotes that I picked up, which I thought actually really transformed how I started to think about community quite significantly was, well, not, not changed, but certainly sort of really focused it in. I, th I think you verbalized it really well was the first was I had a problem and I worked to bring people together. Um, I, I think that's really, um, 
to the spirit of community in that you know you sort of identify this thing and then you bring people together and i think that second half of the sentence in particular is really really important uh, and the second is one i absolutely adored uh, which was the difference between a following and the community is who you choose to prioritize mm -hmm. and uh, i think that's absolutely nailed and like i really think that's that's important because something that i've observed over the course of time uh, when it's come to uh, going into a lot of companies in a corporate environment and, and them saying, I would like to build a community is these folks kind of go, yeah, great. But you know, like that sounds very wishy-washy. Actually, what we're doing here is, is doing an attitude switch and just saying, you know, you know what the difference between a following and a community is who you choose to prioritize and everything else that you presented today followed on from that point so wonderfully so thank you so much i really really appreciate it um if you want to stop sharing your screen right now then we'll be able to get uh, both of our faces uh, on screen and we can take some questions from the community uh very much in the in the uh, the spirit of everything you've been speaking about today and there are 30 open questions right now and uh, less than 30 minutes to be taking these so uh what i'd really really appreciate is if you if everyone watching could head into the q a feature and give a thumbs up to the questions that you would like answering uh just to make sure we really prioritize those ones that um feel important to you uh, that's what we're here for so <laughs> i feel like everything is, is sort of mapping into everything you've spoken about today it's, it's becoming very ma meta here <laughs> sophie uh so the first one comes from anonymous and in fact this is the top two questions uh, another one from ao as well uh which is what tips uh would you recommend for building a community in the b2b space uh and there's a version of that question which is does this community does community work for b2b brands uh it seems a lot more easier or natural for those with sort of b2c uh, sort of orientation amazing no really good question um firstly i think absolutely i think community is possible everywhere and community is built when you address a need so say i am a business that sells what can i sell to other businesses i sell website development i don't i know nothing about websites but in this instant i am a business selling website development to other businesses what are their needs and how can i fill that with what i'm doing so their need is probably they don't know how to build a website they might not know what why a website is important they might not know why a blog function is important they might not know um how or why they should have a follow-up if someone leaves and abandons their basket what needs is your business filling it's filling all of those needs and how can you address that through your content so rather than my content just being hello everybody if you need a website get in touch with me because i am the best my content will be here are three things you need to know about why you need an abandoned car section on your email list whatever website words we want to pop in there because by educating people we're providing value and we're creating community you know a business owner might see that and think oh i need to send that to my other business owner friend and you're creating advocates so what do they need and how are you filling that and um it always goes back to when i create a piece of content what are people taking away from this i hope that helps that's awesome thank you very much sophie there's there's, there's another element to that as well, which um, is funny that you mentioned web development, because there's uh, the thing that the marketing meetup website is built on is, is something called Divi. And uh, they've got phenomenal documentation, which is great. But actually, what they've also got is a community that sits off the back of it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a Facebook group, you know, many, many thousands of people. And these folks uh, sort of jump in and help each other, which I think, you know, to, oh, to, to the, the spirit of uh, community in a B2B environment, then you actually see um, a real business benefit as well, which is these folks are reducing the support costs for the Divi uh, company uh, because they're all helping each other out as well. So the, there's a nice little example there as well, hopefully uh, that's useful. Um, but I absolutely love your your value exchange element there as well, Sophie. So thank you. There's a really brilliant question here that's come from uh, it's either Kaz or Cass. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry for mispronouncing uh, in at least one of those cases, uh, who says, uh, hi, both. If you've just started your business uh, launching today, which is the 22nd of the 2nd, 2022, which is what a beautiful date. Um, what would the first steps be to build my community? I'm a social media manager for a sustainable business. Thank you. And like just to add something to that. 
I think your growth in the first month was pretty blooming remarkable. The fact that you went from zero to a thousand. So, and that, that, that bit's really, really difficult, right? Because everything you've spoken about so far has been like, you know, getting that feedback from the community and stuff like that. But if that community doesn't exist, you know, how do you, <laughs> how do you sort of start right from the beginning to sort of create that, that sense and that audience to, to even be able to have that interaction with? Awesome question. Thank you so much. And um, firstly, congratulations on starting your business. And it is a beautiful day. Two is my favorite angel number. Um, so all of the universe is aligning for you, which is very exciting. Um, for me, starting my community, I wouldn't describe it as easy, but it likely was simpler for me than some, um, because I have always been my target audience. So if I'm struggling <laughs> and I want to address those struggles for others, I know, I already know what those are. Um, really boring market research. <laughs> and, and it all goes back to needs. What needs are you addressing through, through your content and who are you addressing them for? Um, I was building a community for young marketers wanting to get into the industry. Okay, well, what are the struggles of young marketers hoping to get into the industry? Things like networking, knowing where to learn, self-confidence, using LinkedIn, um, knowing what job role you want to get into. So by understanding who my audience are, I can, again, address their needs through my content. So I build advocates, you know, we will send a good piece of content to your friends and the other people struggling with you. Um, I'm giving you something, so you will probably fingers crossed, come back. Um, so have a sit down. Who am I addressing? Who do I want to be in my community? And what needs do they have? Um, places like Answer the Public are really good ones to get insights into what people are searching around your kind of keyword or your core theme. Um, Google Trends might be a good one. Um, or just doing a little bit of social listening. Um, say you're hoping to start a marketing community having a look at pages like Pretty Little Marketer or there's others such as Girls in Marketing, The Marketing Meetup and so many other amazing ones. What questions are people asking in their comments? What content of theirs does really well that you can put your own spin on? So who are your audience and how can you give them value by addressing their needs? Um, no doubt you're going to smash it. What a great day to start a business. <laughs> it's also, you know, I really appreciate that um, because I think what you've done there is verbalized really, really well that um, you don't necessarily need to be the person. So you and I are, are sat here as, as quote unquote community builders who have had their own need and therefore built a community off the back of it. And I think specifically one of the questions that we get a lot is what if my business is really boring? Yeah. And actually it's sort of like, it feels like we're stepping away from that a little bit and just sort of saying it's going to be exciting to someone, you know, someone's going to have a problem or something okay. like that. And if you solve that, then uh, you can, you can create something special. So thank you for that. I, th I think that research is really, really important. Really important. So thank you. Let's take the next one from Simon. There's so many questions. I'm, I hope I'm not moving too quick through them, but I want to also make sure we get folks, uh, give them the opportunity to uh, have their questions answered. So a great question from Simon, which comes in and says, uh, what suggestions do you have about transferring members between communities, e.g. Uh, Twitter to Instagram, Instagram to LinkedIn? Um, so in fact, on a, on a sort of very business level, Simon sort of says the objective is to increase touch points, um, mm -hmm. for the business. Um, so, you know, how, how, how have you successfully transferred folks from one community to the other or, you know, and do you measure it as well? I think that's quite so, interesting. No, really good question. Um, for me, it's all about giving me as a consumer, as a follower, as a community member, a reason to go somewhere new. You know, if I love your content on TikTok. I get enough of you on TikTok. You're ticking the box there. So why should I go somewhere else and, and follow you there? And, you know, as a consumer, give you my time and effort when there's other brands that might do that for me on the platform. So giving people a reason to go over there. Um, for example, on LinkedIn, I might have a different kind of content series or I might share different topics than I do on Instagram. Or on Instagram, I might do an Instagram live series where I interview guests or I do, I do unique things to that platform that you're not going to find somewhere else. Um, you know, exclusive Instagram live tomorrow at X PM. Click the link and, and head over there. What are you giving to people? 
that's different um because I think when we try and send people from one platform to another it's a, it's a lot to ask right I'm already engaging here why do you want me why do you want me over there too so giving people a reason kind of like if you're trying to get people from Instagram to your website what's different there that I'm not getting here um so differentiating those content channels um likely through different series or different content types um what you will get from me on TikTok is going to be very different to what you get from me on Twitter, because on Twitter, I only have a set amount of characters to teach you something. Whereas on TikTok, I can share a video, I can, I can show you things. Um, and for me, it's about actively sending people over there. Um, so two or three times a month on the Pretty to Marketer LinkedIn, I try and link the Instagram. Um, you know, coming up next week on Instagram, we have XYZ. If you want to check it out, you know, not check it out now. If you want to check it out, click here. Um, if I'm honest, I don't think it's something I've mastered or done incredibly well. It's something that I'm still learning. Um, but yeah, kind of top tip there would be why why should they <laughs> have a think about that and how you can differentiate those channels would kind of be my answer there that's awesome and um I, I i love you do this so naturally and i think it's a great lesson for anyone wanting to build a community because i think you do it almost thoughtlessly at this stage which is you you immediately sort of click into the the well why would they you know and and, and actually you, you've you've taken the the self out of this and it's, well how about them you know, and I think that's that's so important. I mean, that's that's a real pure sort of marketing perspective. Um, but I think it's something you've also done incredibly um, naturally. So, you know, I, I think it's awesome to see. And I think it's the reason why or one of the reasons why you're so successful. The second is that seems like such an extreme amount of effort for um, social media stuff, you know, to be creating content on different things. But in such a busy sort of world, then presumably that's what it takes. Right. You know, I mean, do, do you with your own clients in a freelance world do you have to put in the same significant effort across every one of their channels in the same way to to make each one of those fly as well sort of stepping out the plm world i, I do <laughs> it's, it's a is a busy life um luckily when i sign a new client we kind of set strategies so we'll have like an overall aim for the business being online and then we'll tailor how we're going to achieve that aim for different platforms. Um, a lot of the content for myself and my clients is kind of repurposed. Um, so, you know, I might share a TikTok with five tips and then I can repurpose that into one tip on Instagram. And um, I think that's where cross-pollination comes in really easily because here's one tip you need to know if you want to see more, yeah. head to this place. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the amount of platforms there is now is really tricky, but um, I think it's important to remember we don't have to be on all of them we just have to be where our audience are um i have some clients who would flop on tiktok yeah. and some clients who are great on linkedin but wouldn't be so great on instagram so just having to think about what you want your business to achieve online um, and where you can do that well but um but yeah it's, it's hard to keep up with it all isn't it socialism it's yeah. a big world yeah absolutely 100 percent uh Cool. So I love this question that we've got from Alana, who's come in, because we get lots of uh, what and how questions, but we don't get very many why questions. So thank you for asking Alana, who sort of says, uh, why do you think you succeeded in growth so fast? I mean, you, you, you've spoken about what you did, but I mean, gut feel, what, what's the thing that helped you get so big so quick? Oh, that's such a sweet question. I am. Um, we were talking about this before. I speak with Joe about how I'm a really big advocate for other people being their own biggest fan, but I am rubbish at being my own biggest fan and talking about like great things that I think I've done. But we're going to be brave here. We're going to celebrate together. And um, another marketing buzzword that I hate, um, but I think it's just authenticity I know worst word ever because it has no meaning um, <laughs> everything I have done hopefully as you've kind of learned today has been to fill a need I don't want to sell a product I don't want to I offer services but my aim isn't to sell them it's it's to help people um, and I think through my content that's that's really clear on a practical note my copy I type as I talk. So there's a personal element. Sophie is in PLM. Um, I use my Instagram stories to show up and talk about my struggles, talk about my day. And I think that people really want people that they relate to. Um, so yeah, I would say authenticity would be my best answer, even though that sounds really, really fluffy. Um, and just people are receptive. 
I can tell, you can tell, you know, when someone posts on LinkedIn because they want to get the praise or they think that they're going to look great and their head can become a little bit bigger. Um, and the people who genuinely care about the people that they're, they're talking to. Um, so yeah, just, just finding your passion and, and chasing that I think is really important because people know, <laughs> even if you think they don't. <laughs> Absolutely. And actually on that, you know, you make a really great point in that, you know, people have come to recognize you around, um, around PLM and, you know, the stuff that you put out, how important, and this loops into Fiona's question as well. Uh, so Fiona's question is, is it possible for a super corporate client to create a community or is having fun a key part of it? If so, how do you convince them to lighten up? But, I think there's also a part of this, which is how important do you think it is that like it's a person who's representative of the community rather than like just a, a generic brand name? Because we did mention some brand names here today, but I think a lot of them have people that represent those brands too. Do you, do you feel that's important or do you think people can, a community can be about a, a brand? Um absolutely i am um, i follow a guy on tiktok a few of you might have seen him or you might not know him he's called jt barnett he's also on linkedin and instagram i've almost become like a super fan since discovering him a few weeks ago probably on like verging on weird but i think he's awesome um <laughs> he, he talks a lot about community and the creator economy and he speaks a lot about the future of marketing which as a digital marketer all moves quick so it's really important we find ways to keep up and his content is a great way to tick that box and um he talks a lot about how people no no longer want faceless brands they want things we can relate to so when we think about Ryanair you might not physically see them but you can see their eyes you know their tone of voice you you feel the person do do a lingo you've got their team you've got the the wonderful girl in um in the owl costume <laughs> and um, even for brands like Gymshark and Lounge where their face aren't the picture of the brand they're using user generated content to achieve that instead um so I think it can be really difficult if your brand feels a little bit faceless um but using kind of tone of voice to achieve that instead or user generated content if you have access to it I think is um is really helpful um the name someone's asked in the chat was jt barnett i will type in the chat he's awesome um i'm, I'm a super fan <laughs> <laughs> that's wicked thanks sophie um there are so many questions uh so i think what i'm going to do is I'll, I'll send them through to you sophie and, and then you've got the option to do with them whatever you so choose but this is a lovely opportunity to use our community to uh, help create your content too, I guess. Uh, so uh, it, it, it's very, very close to half past. So we will call it there. Um, so just wanted to say a big thank you to Sophie, a big thank you to everyone watching in this morning. Um, that chat feature has been alive and on fire. And you know what? It's so, so appreciated. Uh, every week, it, it really makes such a difference uh, to the energy of these these sessions and, and, and how they come to you. So thank you all so, so much for contributing to these sessions. Um, next week, we're back again next Tuesday. So I really, really hope to see you all there. Uh, a quick one for me is to say uh, a big thank you to our feature sponsor today, who is Content Cal, uh, as well as the rest of our sponsors. Um, and also, if you could share one thing uh, that you took away from today's session on your socials, uh, I'd absolutely adore that. It's a great bit of feedback for us as well into how we can help you more. Um, so with all that said, and with a bunch of really, really lovely messages coming in, uh, we'll call it there. So thank you so much, Sophie, and uh, take care, everyone. Really.